Siemen Company LC products offer all the benefits of SC and ST connections in a small form factor, high density design. Solutions for single mode and multi mode in both buffered and jacketed versions are available. Prior to termination, be sure all required tools are available. Multi mode LC connectors terminate in just two minutes using our light speed termination kit along with the LC upgrade kit. Prepare the preloaded adhesive syringe by removing the cap from the cartridge. Next, install the metal syringe tip provided by threading it onto the cartridge until it locks. Note, save the syringe cap to recap when a partially used syringe is returned to the case for later use. For buffered fiber terminations, slide the strain relief boot over the fiber in the proper orientation as shown. For duplex jacket determinations, first separate the duplex cable a short length and slide both strain relief boots over the fiber as well as the duplex AB clip and colored crimp sleeves. Be careful to orient the AB clip with the letters facing away from the connector end. To ensure proper transmitter to receiver patching, be certain to assemble each end of a duplex assembly with the opposing orientation as shown. To help identify proper orientation, place the same color shrink tubing on opposite ends of the same fiber strand. If correctly assembled, the final duplex assembly will have opposite color coded strands on the A side as well as the B side. Also be sure to orient the crimp sleeve such that the shrink tube end is installed onto the cable first. Using the template card provided, mark the jacket strip length. Optionally, a second mark can be placed on the jacket at the Kevlar cut length. The outer jacket can now be removed in two pieces. Cut the first piece with the jacket stripping tool using the .75 setting. The aramid yarn can now be cut flush with the jacket. Finally cut and remove the remaining small piece of outer jacket to expose the proper length of aramid yarn. For the buffered strand, use the template card again to mark the buffer strip length. Buffered and jacketed fibers both use the same measurement for this mark. Be sure to maintain the correct length on this measurement since an excessive length may push out too much of the adhesive when inserting into the connector and result in a poor bond. Using the buffer stripper, strip off the buffer in at least two pieces. Note that attempting to strip the entire length of buffer in one swipe will typically result in breakage. Also be sure the arrow on the stripping tool is pointed in the direction you are stripping and that the tool blade area is free of buffer debris. Using a dry lint-free wipe, remove any remnants of the protective coating on the fiber after stripping the buffer. Note that it is important to ensure that all remnants of the coat are removed or the fiber will not fit into the connector. Also be careful not to touch the fiber after cleaning to ensure a proper bond. For jacketed fibers, be sure to double check the marks since they may have moved. If required, adjust the cable as necessary. With the light speed primer mounted in the stand, 
dip the entire exposed fiber into the primer and place in a protected area to avoid contamination and damage. Be sure to coat the entire exposed length of fiber, including some portion of the buffer coating, to ensure a proper bond. Do not be concerned with keeping the Kevlar strands out of the primer solution. Next, remove the dust cap from the connector and insert the adhesive syringe tip into the connector housing until it seats firmly inside. Inject the light speed adhesive until a small dot of adhesive appears at the ferrule tip. Also inject a small amount of adhesive into the back end of the connector. This ensures bonding of the buffer to the connector, strengthening the termination. Be careful not to overfill the connector to prevent a backflow of adhesive. Also remember to pull back on the plunger to prevent the adhesive from leaking out. Next you can insert the fiber carefully into the back of the connector. Be careful when inserting the fiber into the back of the connector. Be sure that the fiber is inserted into the center chamber shown here. If you feel resistance, withdraw the fiber slightly and be sure it is not getting caught between the center chamber in the outer housing of the back of the connector. It may help to slightly twist the fiber while inserting. Note for jacketed terminations as shown here, the fiber should be inserted to allow the aramid yarn to fan out around the base of the connector barrel. Allow the fiber to cure for a minimum of 30 seconds. Be careful not to pull on the fiber during the cure time. With the beveled edge of the fiber cleaver facing up, carefully score the fiber close to the intersection of the ferrule tip. Do not use excessive pressure when scoring to prevent fiber breakage. If breakage does occur, keep track of the fiber piece for a proper disposal. Remember to wipe off the fiber cleaver to prevent any adhesive from drying on the blade. After scoring, remove the excess fiber with a straight, non-twisting pull and deposit in a safe place. Note if the fiber does not readily pull off, repeat the previous step scoring on opposite side of fiber. Also be careful not to bump or brush the end face before polishing. For jacketed fiber only, slide the crimp sleeve up over the aramid yarn so that it is seated against the shoulder of the connector housing. Be sure the sleeve does not move prior to being crimped. Next. Position the crimp tool at the end of the crimp sleeve using the point one two opening in the crimp die. Crimp the sleeve by closing the crimp tool completely and releasing. For buffered only fibers, there is no crimping required. Simply slide the boot up to the back of the connector and snap into place. Using the small propane torch from the FTERM-LC kit or equivalent, carefully heat up the shrink tubing on all sides to provide proper strain relief. Hold the torch several inches from the cable, being careful not to overheat the tubing or cable to prevent damage. For simplex jacketed assemblies, the boot can be installed before or after polishing. For duplex jacketed cable, do not slide the boot up yet until after polishing is complete. Using the brown or rust colored film, perform an air polish by gently brushing the ferrule tip against the dull side of the polishing film in a figure 8 fashion. 20 to 25 figure 8s are sufficient to wear the small fiber protrusion into a smoother, more polishable tip. Next, clean and evenly moisten the rubber pad to provide for a smooth polishing surface. This will allow the polishing paper to stick in place. Also ensure no air is trapped between the pad and film. The first pad polish will require the use of the purple colored polishing film.